our witnesses will provide the status of U.S. efforts to reverse this post-independence descent into violence. I want to emphasize up front that the peace agreement signed in August, despite all the challenges of implementation since then, offers the best chance to put South Sudan back on the path to peace. I want to be clear. I stand in support of the people of South Sudan. Their courage and resilience in the face of the abuse heaped upon them by the very people who are supposed to ensure their safety, security, and well-being is truly astonishing. So we have people here from the embassy of South Sudan. I would just say you ought to be embarrassed. I don't know how you can come to a hearing like this representing the government of South Sudan knowing that we have expended $1.3 billion on behalf of the people that you represent and you're targeting aid workers. I'd be embarrassed to send out the kind of press release that you sent out prior to this hearing. I don't know what kind of government you represent. It's, it's very unfortunate that he doesn't feel uh, comfortable with the statement, but I think the statement was uh, a statement of facts, of truth, of the the actual situation in South Sudan. What is really happening and what we see should be the solution. You see, focusing on the two principles as the problem uh, will divert us from focusing on implementing the peace agreement. I think the uh the government's interference itself with humanitarian aid and people trying to help the, the people of South Sudan is reprehensible and again the leadership of both the government and the opposition um, should be condemned. So uh, I don't know what else I can say. Uh, people are living in misery. People are being raped and murdered, burnt. You know this is an internal dispute within a party. They're both profiting from it and uh, I, uh, I just think it's reprehensible. Thank you. Thank you very much.